The kangaroo is a marsupial from the family Macropodidae, macropods, meaning large foot. In common use the term is used to describe the largest species from this family, the red kangaroo, as well as the antilopin kangaroo, eastern grey kangaroo, and western grey kangaroo. The kangaroo is a symbol of Australia, appears on the Australian coat of arms and on some of its currency, and is used as a logo for some of Australia's most well-known organisations, such as Qantas, and as the roundel of the Royal Australian Air Force. Wild kangaroos are shot for meat, leather hides, and to protect grazing land. Although controversial, kangaroo meat has perceived health benefits for human consumption compared with traditional meats due to the low level of fat on kangaroos. The word kangaroo derives from the Gigoumither word gangaro, referring to eastern grey kangaroos. The name was first recorded as kangaroo on July 12, 1770 in an entry in the diary of Sir Joseph Banks, this occurred at the site of modern Cooktown, on the banks of the Endeavour River, where HMS Endeavour under the command of Lt. James Cook was beached for almost seven weeks to repair damage sustained on the Great Barrier Reef. A common myth about the kangaroo's English name is that it was a gigoumither phrase for I don't know or I don't understand. According to this legend, Cook and Banks were exploring the area when they happened upon the animal. They asked a nearby local what the creatures were called. The local responded kangaroo, said to mean I don't know slash understand, which Cook then took to be the name of the creature anthropologist Walter Roth was trying to correct this legend as far back as in 1898 but few took note until 1972 when linguist John B. Haviland in his research with the Gigoumither people was able to confirm that Gangaroo referred to a rare large dark-colored species of kangaroo. However, when Philip Parker King visited the Endeavour River region in 1819 and 1820, he maintained that the local word was not kangaroo but menu of perhaps referring to a different species of macropod. There are similar, more credible stories of naming confusion, such as with the Yucatan Peninsula. Kangaroos are often colloquially referred to as roos. Male kangaroos are called bucks, boomers, jacks, or old men, females are does, flyers, or jills, and the young ones are joeys. The collective noun for a group of kangaroos is a mob, court, or troop. Kangaroos have single-chambered stomachs quite unlike those of cattle and sheep, which have four compartments. They sometimes regurgitate the vegetation they have eaten, chew it as cud, and then swallow it again for final digestion. However, this is a different, more strenuous, activity than it is in ruminants, and does not take place as frequently. Different species of kangaroos have different diets, although all are strict herbivores. The eastern grey kangaroo is predominantly a grazer, and eats a wide variety of grasses, whereas some other species such as the red kangaroo include significant amounts of shrubs in their diets. Smaller species of kangaroos also consume hypogeal fungi. Many species are nocturnal, and crepuscular, usually spending the hot days resting in shade, and the cool evenings, nights, and mornings moving about and feeding. Because of its grazing habits, the kangaroo has developed specialized teeth that are rare among mammals. Its incisors are able to crop grass close to the ground and its molars chop and grind the grass. Since the two sides of the lower jaw are not joined or fused together, the lower incisors are farther apart, giving the kangaroo a wider bite. The silica in grass is abrasive, so kangaroo molars are ground down and they actually move forward in the mouth before they eventually fall out, and are replaced by new teeth that grow in the back. This process is known as polyphyodonty and, amongst other mammals, only occurs in elephants and manatees. Groups of kangaroos are called mobs, cords, or troops, which usually have 10 or more kangaroos in them. Living in mobs can provide protection for some of the weaker members of the group. The size and stability of mobs vary between geographic regions, with eastern Australia having larger and more stable aggregations than in arid areas farther west. Larger aggregations display high amounts of interactions and complex social structures, comparable to that of ungulates. One common behavior is nose touching and sniffing, which mostly occurs when an individual joins a group. The kangaroo performing the sniffing gains much information from smell cues. This behavior enforces social cohesion without consequent aggression. During mutual sniffing, if one kangaroo is smaller, it will hold its body closer to the ground and its head will quiver, which serves as a possible form of submission. 
Greetings between males and females are common, with larger males being the most involved in meeting females. Most other non-antagonistic behavior occurs between mothers and their young. Mother and young reinforce their bond through grooming. A mother will groom her young while it is suckling or after it is finished suckling. A joey will nuzzle its mother's pouch if it wants access to it. Sexual activity of kangaroos consists of consort pairs. Ostrouse females roam widely and attract the attention of males with conspicuous signals. A male will monitor a female and follow her every movement. He sniffs her urine to see if she is in estrus, a process exhibiting the flame in response. The male will then proceed to approach her slowly to avoid alarming her. If the female does not run away, the male will continue by licking, pawing, and scratching her, and copulation will follow. After copulation is over, the male will move on to another female. Consort pairing may take several days and the copulation is also long. Thus, a consort pair is likely to attract the attention of a rival male. As larger males are tending bonds with females near estrus, smaller males will tend to females that are farther from estrus. Dominant males can avoid having to sort through females to determine their reproductive status by searching for tending bonds held by the largest male they can displace without a fight. Fighting has been described in all species of kangaroos. Fights between kangaroos can be brief or long and redo a least. In highly competitive situations, such as males fighting for access to ostrouse females or at limited drinking spots, the fights are brief. Both sexes will fight for drinking spots, but long, redo a least fighting or boxing is largely done by males. Smaller males fight more often near females in estrus, while the large males in consorts do not seem to get involved. Ritualist fights can arise suddenly when males are grazing together. However, most fights are preceded by two males scratching and grooming each other. One or both of them will adopt a high standing posture, with one male issuing a challenge by grasping the other male's neck with its forepaw. Sometimes, the challenge will be declined. Large males often reject challenges by smaller males. During fighting, the combatants adopt a high standing posture and paw at each other's heads shoulders and chests. They will also lock forearms and wrestle and push each other as well as balance on their tails to kick each other in the abdomen. Brief fights are similar, except there is no forearm locking. The losing combatant seems to use kicking more often, perhaps to parry the thrusts of the eventual winner. A winner is decided when a kangaroo breaks off the fight and retreats. Winners are able to push their opponents backwards or down to the ground. They also seem to grasp their opponents when they break contact and push them away. The initiators of the fights are usually the winners. These fights may serve to establish dominance hierarchies among males, as winners of fights have been seen to displace their opponent from resting sites later in the day. Dominant males may also pull grass to intimidate subordinate ones. Kangaroos have a few natural predators. The thylacine, considered by paleontologists to have once been a major natural predator of the kangaroo, is now extinct. Other extinct predators included the marsupial lion, Megalonia, and one ambi. However, with the arrival of humans in Australia at least 50,000 years ago and the introduction of the dingo about 5,000 years ago, kangaroos have had to adapt. Wedge-tailed eagles and other raptors usually eat kangaroo carrion but wedge-tailed eagles are known to hunt young or small kangaroos. Gonas and other carnivorous reptiles also pose a danger to smaller kangaroo species when other food sources are lacking. Along with dingoes, introduced species such as foxes, feral cats, and both domestic and feral dogs, pose a threat to kangaroo populations. Kangaroos and wallabies are adept swimmers, and often flee into waterways if presented with the option. If pursued into the water, a large kangaroo may use its forepaws to hold the predator underwater so as to drown it. Another defensive tactic described by witnesses is catching the attacking dog with the forepaws and disemboweling it with the hind legs. Eye disease is rare but not new among kangaroos. The first official report of kangaroo blindness took place in 1994, in central New South Wales. The following year, reports of blind kangaroos appeared in Victoria and South Australia. By 1996, the disease had spread across the desert to Western Australia. Australian authorities were concerned the disease could spread to other livestock and possibly humans. 
Researchers at the Australian Animal Health Laboratories in Geelong detected a virus called the Wallal virus in two species of midges, believed to have been the carriers. Veterinarians also discovered fewer than 3% of kangaroos exposed to the virus developed blindness. Kangaroo reproduction is similar to that of possums. The egg, still. Contained in the shell membrane, a few micrometers thick, and with only a small quantity of yolk within it, descends from the ovary into the uterus. There it is fertilized and quickly develops into a neonate. Even in the largest kangaroo species, the red kangaroo, the neonate emerges after only 33 days. Usually, only one young is born at a time. It is blind, hairless, and only a few centimetre long, its hind legs are mere stumps, it instead uses its more developed forelegs to climb its way through the thick fur on its mother's abdomen into the pouch, which takes about 3 to 5 minutes. Once in the pouch, it fastens onto one of the four teeth and starts to feed. Almost immediately, the mother's sexual cycle starts again. Another egg descends into the uterus and she becomes sexually receptive. Then, if she mates and a second egg is fertilized, its development is temporarily halted. This is known as embryonic diapause, and will occur in times of drought and in areas with poor food sources. Meanwhile, the neonate in the pouch grows rapidly. After about 190 days, the baby, Joey, is sufficiently large and developed to make its full emergence out of the pouch, after sticking its head out for a few weeks until it eventually feels safe enough to fully emerge. From then on, it spends increasing time in the outside world and eventually, after about 235 days, it leaves the pouch for the last time. The lifespan of kangaroos averages at 6 years in the wild to in excess of 20 years in captivity, varying by the species. Most individuals, however, do not reach maturity in the wild.